Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very exponential complex equation. Whatever you call it, you can call it an imaginarily complex equation as well. We have i to the power z plus i equals 1 and we're supposed to solve for z. Now this equation kind of looks complicated, right? No, not really. Let me show you something. First of all, i is the base on the left hand side, so we can go ahead and write it in polar form. How do you write i in polar form? If you consider the argon plane, it's, i is going to appear here, and it makes a connection to the origin, one unit away from uh, zero, and then it makes an angle of pi over 2 radians, or 90 degrees, right? We have a real part, an imaginary part, so on and so forth. To keep a long story short, any complex number can be written as z equals r e to the i theta, where r is the modulus and theta is the argument, which I refer to as the angle. So in this case, i can be written as 1, which is its modulus, times e to the power i times pi over 2, but pi over 2 is only one of the values, because we can rotate, add multiples of 2 pi, and we'll get to the same point. So instead of writing pi over 2, I'm just going to be adding 2 pi n, this is something we're going to discuss later. Let's leave it there for now. And then, of course, I need to plug it in, right? This should be plugged in into the following equation. e to the power z plus i replace, I mean i to the power, sorry about that. I'm going to replace i with this, okay? Is that cool? Now let's do it. e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, and then that will be raised to the power z plus i. Of course, in this case, the exponents are multiplied. So we get the following. e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n multiply by z plus i. And that's equal to 1. Awesome. Now if you can go ahead and complexify 1, that would be great because now we can kind of compare the exponents. In other words, I can write this 1 as e to the power 2 pi ki. I did not want to use n, by the way, I forgot to say, but n is an integer and k is an integer. So they're both integers, but they don't have to be the same. That's why I wanted to use a different integer for the right-hand side, for the one on the right-hand side. Make sense? Now, if you substitute this e to the power 2 pi ki into any calculator, it should give you one all the time. So one can be written in infinitely many ways in the complex world. That's why complex world is awesome. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and see how we can solve this mess. <laughs> it's kind of messy, right? But here's the thing. We have e's on both sides, so, so that's good. And we're, we'll compare the exponents. i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n times z plus i equals 2 pi ki. Obviously, we can divide both sides by pi and i. Let's start with i first. That's kind of easy. To divide by pi, I'm going to go ahead and factor out a pi here, and that's going to give me 1 half plus 2n times z plus i equals 2 pi k. And again, the pi is going to cancel out, leaving us with something even simpler. But let's go ahead and simplify it more. Here, make a common denominator. You're going to get z plus i multiplied by 4n plus 1 all over 2 equals 2k. Again, cross multiply and divide. z plus i is going to be 4k divided by 4n plus 1. This is something that we see very often with complex numbers. There are two different integers. I mean, not necessarily equal integers, I should say, because they could be the same in some cases, right? We have a, kind of like an interesting pattern. For example, if k and n are both 0, then we get 0, which should kind of make sense, right? Let's take a look. Okay, so if n and k are both 0, then from here, I should be getting z plus i equals 0, because notice that k equals 0 is going to give us 0. It doesn't matter at the bottom because we have a 1, so that's good because uh, sometimes we can run into uh, some situations like undefined or indeterminate form, right? 0 divided by 0. Some people say it's undefined, but I would still call, call it indeterminate because you can't always determine what it is. All right? And undefined is usually used for something like 1 over 0, where it's kind of infinity, right? Anyways, so z plus i equals 0 implies z equals negative i. So, uh-oh, it's that simple. 
Well, it's supposed to be a solution, right? Let's go ahead and check it out. We have i to the power z plus i. If z is negative i, we get i to the power 0 because negative i plus i is 0. They're opposites, obviously. And i to the power 0 is always 1. So, yay, negative i works. But what about a more general approach? For example, what would happen if k and n are both 1, right? That's something we're going to talk about towards the end. But before that, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem from a second perspective, which I guess you could call the second method, even though I didn't name the first one first. Whatever. We can think simpler. How? Think about when you would get one from a power of i. Think about powers of i. If you're not familiar with them, just list them. What is i to the power of 1? i. What is i squared? Negative 1. By definition, remember that? That's the most important identity. i cubed is i squared times i, which is negative i. And i to the fourth is i squared times i squared, which is positive 1. Uh-oh. This works mod 4. We got 1 at the fourth power. You know what that means? It means that, hey, I can replace 1 with i to the power 4. But not only that, obviously, you want to get a more general solution. So if i to the 4 is 1, raising both sides to any integer powers, like k maybe, would not hurt because it will still be 1, right? 1 to the k is 1. Make no mistake, if you are talking about roots of 1, they are not always 1. But if you're talking about powers of 1, it's always 1. Okay? Make sure you pay attention to that type of distinction. Okay? Are we good? Let's proceed. Now, what do we notice? We notice that 1 can be written as i to the power 4k, but I have 1 over here. So let's go ahead and replace it because our goal is to solve for z, right? Not for k or anything, anything else. So I'm going to replace the 1 with i to the power 4k leaving us with a very simple equation. Come on, z plus i is equal to 4k. k is an integer, remember that. You can add negative i to both sides. That'll give you z equals negative i plus 4k. That seems to be the solution, but again, you can always, always, always check, right? And what would happen in this case? It would work. Okay, great, you can go ahead and try it out. But what happens with my first approach, right? This kind of gave us a solution, but with my first approach, I got something like this. That kind of looks messy, doesn't it? So how do I... Re what? Well, wait, that wasn't the solution. Okay, I forgot to write it. Anyways, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and clean this area. I want to use this area because I'm lazy. I don't want to rewrite this again. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, isolate this expression and write it as negative i plus 4k over 4n plus 1. And again, remember k and n are integers. Now, what happens in this case? For example, if k is n equals n equals 1, they're both equal to 1, we're going to get z equals negative i plus 4 over 5. Do you think that'll work? I mean, you can test it out, but does that look like a feasible solution to you? What are your thoughts, right? I'd like to hear them. But let's go ahead and plug it in. We could do that, right? i to the power z plus i would be i to the power negative i plus 4 over 5 plus i, i cancels out, leaving us with i to the power 4 over 5. Is that equal to 1? Maybe. Sometimes. Who knows? Here's what we're going to do. i to the power 4 over 5, because 4 and 5 are relatively prime, which is good. I can write this as i to the 4th to the power 1 fifth. i to the 4th is 1, as you know. This is 1 to the power 1 fifth, which means the fifth roots of unity, the complex roots of unity. There are five possible values. Guess what? One of them is 1. <laughs> And that's the one we can go by. But it's kind of ambiguous, isn't it? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.